Money is once again at the center of cricket discourse in the Caribbean. This time it surrounds the decision by three cricketers to refuse central contracts from the West Indies Cricket Board. The explanation is that by signing the contract, they would hamper their ability to cash in on lucrative paychecks in the various tournaments across the world. Some commentators in the media, and especially on the blogs, have sympathized with the players, who they argue have every right to grab opportunity to earn big money. While this argument seems reasonable enough on the surface, it masks a much more complex situation that is both general to the Caribbean society and particular to the cricketers. There is no doubt that the American approach of enriching the individual while disempowering the larger society has now become a dominant ideology in the region. The lure of earning large sums of money is attractive to the youth, especially in economic challenges societies like the Caribbean. It is often the passport to a better life for the individual and his or her family. But the consequences for cricket in the region have been devastating. The amount of money earned by the West Indian cricketers today is stunning compared to the earnings of cricketers of yesteryear whose skill levels were at least five times superior to those of the present crop. The contracts being refused are worth between 80 thousand and 120 thousand US dollars per year. When you add match fees to that sum, these cricketers rank among the highest paid in the world, yet they refuse all of that money. Now, while the cricketers earn more money today, they have won less matches. This is due to three major factors. First, the ability to earn big money has had a negative effect on the skill level of the cricketers. If you can earn big money, by lashing the ball around for a few minutes, then why bother to learn the technical skills? The second related consequence of the money culture on West Indian is that the cricketers have become arrogant. They behave like little gods, and they have little regard for the traditions of the game or for the stalwarts who made it possible for them to represent the West Indies today. Finally, the cricketers possess little or no sense of national pride. This is an important aspect of any game. Experts will tell you that if you have pride, then you have won half of the game. The West Indian cricketers have no dignity, and so therefore they do not play with that extra passion that is needed. But the cricketers are not alone. There has developed in the society a set of people who push an ideology that trades pride and dignity for wealth. We have forgotten how to be rich with both material things and dignity. That is what Garvey preached. He said, wealth, yes, but wealth at the expense of dignity, no.